Welcome to the UK OCR Community Podcast, presented by Obstacle Racing Media. Each episode, we'll be talking to race directors, elite runners, weekend warriors, and frankly, anyone else from the UK OCR scene that will talk to us. Here is your host, Alan, aka Muddy Duck. Anywhere in Chicken South. The bloody scene is bloody sad. The bloody news is bloody bad. Greetings, friends, acquaintances, and anyone else just happens to be listening. Welcome to another edition of the UK OCR podcast. How is everyone? Hope you've had a really good weekend. Hope you've had a really good week as well. Um, what have you been up to? Uh, I know what I've been up to. I've been up to so much this week. Trying to sort out the awards in terms of let's get the votes in, um, which is closed now, by the way. The votes are closed. However, you can still get a seat if you want to come to the awards on the 4th of March and in Rygate which is about 30 minutes drive from Nuts Challenge so you can do Nuts in the morning um, stroke afternoon and then come to the awards in the evening if you fancy doing that there are still some seats available you can catch them on our um, bio I'll put in in the description you can go on there and it's our link tree our new link tree by the way I don't know if you've seen that we've got a new link tree now which um, is going to get bigger and we can add to it and do a lot more to it um, I guess we're moving away slightly from our website which has a lot of stuff on it, but it's it's sort of stopped. Well, I won't say stopped getting traction. It's, it does get a lot of attention, um, but it's old and it's going to cost us far too much money to renew it. So um, we have set someone on it. We don't know what's going to be done. So we're going more to Linktree in the interim period. But that's us, yeah. Um, I built an ice bath. <laughs> Did you see it on um, on our Facebook and YouTube twit YouTube feed at the weekend? Not YouTube feed, um, Instagram feed. I have built a bit of an ice bath. So I've gone and bought myself a huge metal steel barrel that had some chain in it. Make sure it got no chemicals in it and it's sealable. Uh, bought some chlorine tablets. Or, well, that's a bromine, but same as chlorine. Keeps it nice and clear and stops all that green mould coming on. Filled it with cold water because it's outside and it's steel. It's absolutely freezing. Um, went in it on Sunday after my I did 10 mile. I just shot a 10 mile on Sunday. So I jumped in it, spent, I only spent like 45, 50 seconds in it. I was absolutely frozen. I think I need to put something on my feet because my feet being on the bottom, on that steel on the bottom, that was the part that was cold. So I felt all right in the legs and, um, you know, up to up to my son, the stomach, my waist area, um, when I stood into it, it felt all right. Uh, I can crouch down in it, which is good. Um, but yeah, I think I need to put some on my feet because... That just wasn't nice to on the cold floor. That was a part I got tingly, tingly toes, if you if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I looked at them loomy ones. I was going to get one of those. Looked at a few others. I was going to get one of those. But I didn't decide I wanted something really strong. Having two bulldogs, if it's plastic or anything like that, they chew it. Um, and I just thought I'm going to pay money out to buy another one at a later date. So yeah. So um, ice bath, I'll let you know how it goes on in, in the future. They're supposed to be really, really good. I had so much good feedback from it. Um, thanks to Fergal Keeney, um, who got me into this. And yeah, that's me. Doing back to, like I said, back to running and that. Um, yeah, and I've, I've been busy doing some footage. So Jen's dropped me loads and loads of videos over from WTM and things like that. So I've just put them together in a, a quick reel, which we're going to put on Facebook. Um, and I don't even get them on, on Instagram because of the length of them. But we'll see what we can do. Um, if we can't, we'll have to put them on different reels. But yeah, so lots of footage coming from us and that. Um, and I didn't get lost this weekend, which is always a good sign. <laughs> so what have we got on today? So we've got a bit of a treat for you today. So first of all, I did an interview. Um, and this guy is Chris Shipley. Uh, he's done amazing things. People know him from down south. He's um, a bit of a, I want to say he's a bit of an ultra runner. Um, because that's what he is. Uh, he does more long distance runs and things like that. So people will know him and that, but he's also going to join our Who's Hot team. So we talk about that. What's he looking forward to when he joins our Who's Hot team? Because Mark's having a bit of a hiatus, so Chris is going to step in with him. And then after Chris, I have got Kate Steelwell and Russell Walsh. Separate interviews, only 10, 15 minutes of each, um, just to talk about McTuff, how, they, how much they enjoyed it, or if they didn't enjoy it, the good, the bad, everything that happened there and how their races went. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's coming after Chris. So I hope you stay and um, I'll jump on after them to say bye to you all. Speak soon.
And listeners, I have got with me today, I want to say a bit of a dark horse, because this guy, and you, you, I probably, you're probably just hear me introduce him, but this guy has been around for a while. Um, he does rock quite well. Um, and he's going to be a, a new, he's going to be on our regular show as well on Who's Up. Chris Shipley, welcome to the UK OCR podcast. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, you right? I'm good. I, I hope, I won't say you're good, but I hope you're good because I, I know you've you've been training hard and things like that. Um, yeah, and... yeah it's, it's winter, so all the training's uh, very monotonous at the moment, just trying to keep a lot of miles under the feet and just uh, keep ticking over without getting injured. I think everyone's <laughs> in the same boat. Is, is it all... Is, I'm, I'm going to say because you're a competitive runner. I'm not a competitive runner, so I, I run a lot for fun. I'm going to assume that your first competitive race will but that probably be nuts in the OCR se- series. Yeah, I haven't fully decided whether I'm going to do nuts in winter yet, but the first proper competitive one, I think nuts is going to do the qualification for this year's uh, World Fizo thing for the 3K. So yeah. I think that's probably the the first proper competitive thing I'll be doing, and then the next one after that be the Challenge Cup. But I'm likely to run nuts just not sure what distance yet because it's winter <laughs> when, when i look at your ocr history i, I go back i'm going to take you back to 2019 um if if my research is right and i'm pretty certain it is was it third place in the musical league in 2019 uh that was just before covid wasn't it so yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah yeah it was the it was the last ever musical league you know it was the, it was the last one they ever did um and I've got you down as third place. Um, but you, you, you pick and choose. Am I right in saying you pick and choose your races? So a lot of OCR athletes, you know, um, and I hope James Burton don't mind me saying this, but James will go to every race he possibly could. Yeah. Um, but you are very much, are, are you strategic? Uh, I basically just don't like anything short. <laughs> I like my races to be 20K plus And anything short, which is annoying really, for the, especially this year, because they seem to be getting shorter and shorter. But I like the long, the long grindy stuff. And anyone who knows me knows how much I like long grindy races. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so that's where the Musical League would have, I guess, played into your hands because they had dirty weekend, didn't they? In, I didn't in even race that. No, I think I got most oh, wow. of the points. I think I gained most points on that year just from I did two nuts races and a few others. I can't even remember what races were they, they were, but I think I got a first and a second at nuts, and I think that's what carried me through the year on the Musical League. Right. And maybe there's some good results at nuclear as well. I'm not too sure. I'd have to pull up the, the, the <laughs> thing. But I can't really remember. You know, I, I've actually, I was actually looking to see if I could I could pull up the actual league and look be, sort of behind the scenes at sort of what results were, and I couldn't see it. So I was like, I was a bit gutted because I wanted to like go in a little bit more about how you did and and things like that. So you just put there, you, you don't tend to race like under 20k. Um, no, no, that's right. I mean, uh, I think I've only ever done one Spartan sprint ever, and I hated it. And I think even even when we did the the lockdown, we was doing the time trials things. I hated them. And I think um, Mark Turner got a video of me doing the uh, the finals at uh, at Scotty's PT barn. And I think you can see me finishing it on the on the last race that he recorded. And I'm like, I, I really hate racing these stuff, and I'm blowing, and I just I just disgust. I don't like that feeling of like being. In VO2 max for that look, that short time. So, <laughs> I don't know how anyone likes it. There's people who love that sort of stuff, and I hate it. <laughs> I, I, I'm like you. I guess when I I was always a 10k runner. You know, when I got into it, I, I got to that 10k mark, and I ran 10k for many many years. Travelled up and down the country, you know, trying to race and competing. Maybe not to your standard. Um, you know, I was top 10 finishing a few races, but but that. But as I've got older. I'm starting to move a little bit more into the longer distances where I can I can just get on my feet and just just plod, you know, literally I mean just plod. I'm, you know, I'm running um a 30 minute 5k, you know, just that that, that pace constantly yeah. as yeah. opposed to like I mean I know you're a am I right in saying you're a sub 20 minute um park runner? Oh yeah, 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 park run, yeah. Yeah. Go on, what go on, what's your PB at park run? You're going uh, to right to shame I don't me. know cuz I don't I don't really do any road park runs. Uh I think I'm like an 18 minute but that's all off road stuff. I don't wow. don't ever really do road ones, and they've always always got hills. But I, we part like to I like it to be a race, uh, so I don't really care about time. I just like to have people there who's faster than me, and then just try and keep with them. So as long as it's good people running, and you can have a good blast at a park run, I think that's really good fun. 
I mean, you get a lot of that down down where you are because a quite big part runs out there, you know. Um, yeah, we got some we, we got area. some really we, uh, well. We're down in Hampshire. We got some really good ones. We got Alice Holt. That's a good off road one. We got uh, Queen Elizabeth Park has one, which is quite a good park run. And then Borden, which is the closest one to me now, that's not a bad one. It's quite sandy, got a bit of like um, sort of rocky, stony trails. Uh, yeah, it's all right. That sounds like a perfect park run to me. That. Yeah, it is, it is a good one. That's the one I want. Yeah, I should come down and do some. I actually felt it. You know, we're going to come to 2018 in a minute. I know you've been around the around the country, and we'll come to that in a moment. But I fancy going around the country doing park runs. Yeah, you know, that's just right. like just doing different ones and and seeing what they like. And I well, think there's I'm people who about... do that all over the world, isn't there? Yeah, they go all over yeah. the place. Yeah, yeah. But just have the built to have the money first of all in this in this climate to travel like, all over the country and that. Um, but I think it'd be good. I, I wonder how many actually. Someone out there, message me. Tell me how many park runs there are. I bet there's about five hundred around the no, UK. There's, now. There's, around the UK, I bet there's more. I bet there's you so there's much more? more. Yeah, yeah, I bet there's more because all they need is uh, somewhere somewhere that's not on the main road or public or proper roads, and they can organise it themselves, can't they? So it's all volunteers of local places where they don't have to mm. cross a road. I think. I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure. But... Yeah, I've never done one that's crossed a road. <laughs> that would be <laughs> pretty scary. That yeah. one. Park, actually... park run on the M25. That'd be a good one. What what race did I did once that actually did? Cr- I didn't do an OCR once that actually crossed a, crossed a road. Oh, um, in Moncaster Castle, did one called Race the Tide, mm. and you actually crossed the road twice, and it's a main road. Um, there's marshals there stopping you. Going, yeah. yeah, clear go. Yeah, clear go. <laughs> Yeah, Imagine building a lead up there and then getting stopped at the road. Yeah, right, and then everyone's catching you up. <laughs> yeah, oh, that would be... <laughs> that'd be classic, though. That'd be classic. Um, what got you into OCR, Chris? Um, I think what got me into OCR was, uh, well, back when I was, before I got into like training and things, I wasn't really doing much with my life. So um, I sort of got into fitness and then heard about Spartan Race. I think a, a guy I knew did a Tough Mudder and that sounded really, really cool. And then like a few years when I started getting into fitness, I heard a like Spartan race and I heard that was quite competitive. And then I just sort of did one of them. And then as soon as you do one, that was it. I was hooked, you know, it was, it was because you're running, you're doing things, you're running again, you're climbing over stuff, you're carrying stuff. You just feel like a macho man, just being all alpha male and stuff and and then once you've done that you just want to keep doing more and more and it was just brilliant and then you meet all the people in OCR and it's a great come uh, well good bunch of people that you always meet and you know some of the best people I've met over the years have all been OCR people and you know it's just a great atmosphere good people to be around it's just a brilliant sport too right too right I mean I mean you traveled traveled the world um in OCR is it three world championships you've been to? Uh, so I've done the second ever world championships down in Ohio. Did the one in Canada, missed the next one. And then I've done them ever since. I think I've only had a few after that. Yeah, so I've been around, did European championships a few times. I've been over to do the, the OCR series. So, yeah, I've been about doing doing some races. What, what, what's it? I, I mean, I, I haven't... I guess I, I create the UK OCR community, but you know, but it is UK OCR because that's me. I stick to the UK. I don't, I don't go abroad. What's, what's it like going abroad? In, and because they are the same people, aren't they? You know, was it, was it the same people when you went years ago to where it is now? Uh, a few more added. Yeah, I think you still get the same bunch. I mean, if you go over to Europe, they're mad for it. They are yeah. absolutely mad for OCR. You know, I think Europe's probably leading leading the race in races and how they organize things and the, the quality of people that they get out there. Um, same with America. I mean, they've got a different style of OCR compared to the Europeans. Um, yeah. But the people are all the same. I think they're all just, we're all just mad, mad fuckers who just love <laughs> doing stuff. Do you know? <laughs> love, love, I'm around. Right, right. Stuff. But you know what? You're seeing the new new people coming through, though, as well, aren't you? So if you go back to when you did the second one, 2017, 2018, you're now seeing people like Libby coming through, Harvey Mitchell, Divers. Yeah. What's it like seeing that little, you know, it's that fantastic. element coming through? It's really good. I mean, it's what needs to be happening. Uh, you know, when when I started OCR, I mean, it's still like that now, but you, you, you're not get you didn't have the organisation of trying to get these youngsters into the sport that was still at the time very new. And mm. now, you know, with the help of James Burton trying to push the, the UK 
stuff and getting younger and younger people into it, you're seeing these athletes now. I mean, Mo, I'll tell you a good example of one is Mo. Mo, um, I forget his name because I'm used to some names. But Mo, Mo from Mo. Rumble. Mo, Mo, Mo. Morgan Maxwell. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows him as Mo, don't they? <laughs> but if you, Morgan Maxwell, there's a prime example. That kid, he's been racing OCR since I think he was 16. And he's come all the way now, and now he's racing an adult. And he's probably the, I'd, I'd call him the first child of OCR because he actually was there at the very beginning ish. And he's come all the way through to adulthood. And seeing his progression, it's been amazing because he's now like probably one of the best OCR athletes in, in the UK. And he's still got so much further to go. And, you know, he should set an example for all the new kids that are coming through because that's what they could be. They could all have, you know, that, that way. It's Libby's the same. If she, if she keeps maintaining the, the sort of structure that she's get, got, she, she'll go far. It's amazing what they're capable of. And they're so quick and they just don't seem to get tired, do they? No, no. And you got Finley as well. So I, I was just about to mention Finley because he's I, I pop down Rumble every now and again and he's running. He's he's crazy. He just loves it and he doesn't slow down either. And he's starting to beat beat some top guys now. Yeah. Do you, do you think he looks up to, to Mo a little bit? Because Mo's at, at Rumble as well, isn't he? So yeah. do you think he looks up to Mo that little bit, the similar age? What about yeah, Four I think so. I mean, they should do. I mean, I look up to Mo, <laughs> and he's younger <laughs> than me. <laughs> you know, so Finley should do. I mean, he. I think Finley looks up to a lot of people, and he, he's he's been in the sport for quite a long time. So he's got his heroes. You know, he probably looks overseas at some of the, ra- the you know, like the Ryan Atkins and things. Looks up to them, but he's mad for it, and I'm sure he looks up to Mo and other races in the UK, James Burton and. And uh, like Luke Benedictus and all those sort of other people, Darren Martin down at Rumble, he probably looks up to all of them because they all help him with his OCR as well. So, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and it's great that we're getting a, that competitive element back now as well, isn't it? You know, it's in theory, all we ever had was the Munsterkill League. You know, yeah. we, we tried to do one with it a little bit up north, you know, with the, with the community league. Didn't really take off. Um, you know, it, it was the Munsterkill. Everyone was at Munsterkill and, you know, and fair play to them. Since they've gone, we've we've brought this back, and thanks to people like Mark Dixon who who tr- pushed us into doing it, um, as well as a few others, um, it's brought that little bit of competition back into the yeah. UK, and and that's driven by British obstacle sports as well by having, I guess, competitive runners at, in some of the top positions in British obstacle sports. Although they're not forgetting the you know the the weekend warriors, it is pushing that element, and we're actually seeing a bit of a I don't know if you know this, but uh, um. McTuff this weekend, there was mm. 117 people wearing competitive bibs. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's what we need. I mean, being a weekend warrior is brilliant. And, you know, they're, they're what keep the races alive, really. They're mm. what keep the go- races going. But to have competitive races, that's why I race. And I think that's why a lot of people race. I mean, it's not about the winning or the losing. It's about getting on the start line with people who have trained their asses off and you're all up there just to try and perform at the best that you can be. And you cannot perform at the best that you want to be without being competitive or having a competitive sport. Because you don't get that, that, that rivalry, that, that, that fight between other people. You don't get that. So it's fantastic that the UK OCR is now becoming more and more competitive. And it's good. We're seeing more and more numbers at all these races. We've got races working together to you know, have the the new league and they're coming from mm. all over the place. And hopefully we get even more. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I'd like to see a, a big league or a couple of little leagues to match it. You have a, you know, my my own goal, and I don't mind saying this, is to have a big league at the top, the UK OCR Series League, and then maybe to have a, a Southern, a, a Midlands, a Northern and the Scottish and have, have four ones, but they also come together as yeah, well at yeah, some that's of the right. events. That'd be great. You know, and, yeah. Um, so if- yeah, it's it's always quite hard, especially for the, the the people up north and the people in the middle to all try and because I mean they, they have it unlucky really because most of the races are down here in the south, mm-hmm. so it's not so to, if they had races up there and leagues up there, it'd be so good. And then they could come down for these cha- championships and then have like the main race, you know, stops yeah. everyone traveling too far. Yeah, L- like a feeder system in the UK. I love that idea. I love mm-hmm. that idea. You, know, you talk quickly about weekend warriors, and I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to talk about a six month warrior. You know, <laughs> I think you know where I'm going with this. Um, you did something amazing. You know, go back 2018, six months, six months. Um, you went around the UK, all the way around the coast, um, on your own. First of all, 
where I want to know where you got the idea from. Where did you get the idea <laughs> just to get on your feet and just go? So I think the idea all started from reading a book about someone who cycled around the UK. Uh, and then ever since I read that book, I mean, I always like doing mad things and traveling around and that. But ever since I read that book, I thought, well, that sounds like a great idea. You know, I always wanted to do like a cycle tour or, or something, you know, where you're at, at, traveling for a long period of time. And then the idea came of, oh, it'd be good if I just did it on foot because then I wouldn't need a bike and I wouldn't need this. And then then I mentioned it to a few people. And then after you've mentioned it to a few people, you're kind of you're, you're kind of stuck, really, because you've said it and you kind of got to go through with it. Then, haven't you? you know, they always just think you're talking shit. <laughs> So uh, it, just, it just came about and then it, I told a few more people and then eventually it just all came together and then I went off and did it. You did it. Now, Ian's, I'm going to say what no Ian's put on. So Ian's my research. Everyone knows Ian does my research here. And he's put, you've got to ask him um, why he did it the muddy duck way. So this is how, what he means because he's put, um, if I'd have done it, I'd have been completely and utterly planned, but it looks like Chris just got up, got out and just ran and had no plan. Is that right? Did you have a plan or did you not? No, I had, I had no plan at all. I mean, the only thing I did plan was I, I planned which way I was going to go around, and that was about it, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, I planned my kit. I planned my kit that I had a little bit. I mean, I, I, I tested my kit. That's probably the, the most bit of planning I ever did. But other than that, yeah. So, what, what I mean, this is, I, I would. I don't know how you, I wouldn't even know where to start planning for this. Neither did I. Like <laughs> you know, you, you're right. You know, so that would be completely me. But kit wise, I mean, I, I wouldn't know. But I'd be wanting to set the kitchen sink. I'd be like, well, I need at least three jackets, fourteen pair of shorts. Oh, my boxer shorts. Yeah. What if I um, go for a pint in an evening? I need some jeans. And <laughs> 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 what what did you pack? What what did you pack? Oh, not a lot to be honest, because it gets quite heavy when you try and stick everything in a bag. I mean, when I left, I had too much stuff, and I obviously threw away stuff on the way. But I had. Uh, one pair of running shorts, a pair of night shorts, basically a, a sort of a merino jumper, a running jumper, two pair of two pairs of pants, uh, two pairs of socks, a hat, a uh, down jacket, and then the rest of my kit was just my sleeping bag and tent, and then food, and that was pretty much about it. And, and so every night, and you know, this is what astounds me: you're carrying your tent and your sleeping bag around with you. But your plan, from from my understanding, when I've listened to you on another podcast. Your plan was to run a marathon to, to 35 miles a, a day. Was that the plan? Yeah, so the, the, the main goal was to do no little than 20 miles a day. Uh, yeah. there, there was a previous guy who ran around Britain and he did it in 10 months and I calculated sort of the distance and things. I mean, I'm not brilliant at maths, but I calculated the distance and I worked out if I do 20 miles a day, I'll kick his ass basically because I'm a little bit competitive. Yeah. And the idea was to try and do it as fast as I could. And I so I said 20 miles a day, I'll try and do that at least. And then... Just go from there. So, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Did you get up some mornings and think you didn't want to run, though? Not really, because if I didn't, if I didn't move anywhere, I wouldn't have anything else to do. So <laughs> if, I, if I didn't, if I didn't go running, I wouldn't be doing anything. So, you know, you just get up and you think, well, I've got nothing else to do today. I might as well just keep moving <laughs> one direction, which was brilliant. I mean, you kind of get a good sense of like it's. It, a time when you're doing nothing but just doing one thing is so good for the brain. It gives you a, an immense time to just think about everything that goes on in your life or what's ever gone in in your life. And you just you just plod along just thinking about all the good stuff and, yeah, and having a good time. That, that, that's one of the things I've got on here. It's like you've got so much time with yourself. You know, I, I know a few people came and ran with you, didn't they? You know, did yeah. little legs with you and things like that. But the time when you were on your own, what, what was the... Was it, it, it can't have been all good times. You know, there must have been a few dark moments in there as well. You know, what did you I do mean, to get yourself out of, I guess, those moments when you were thinking, you know, really deep thoughts? And did you contemplate the the um, the creation of life or something <laughs> like that? Yeah, I did a bit actually. But um, I mean, people who know me know that I'm quite a positive person, and I'm I'm not one to be down a lot of the times because I just don't think that anything it's not it's not worth ever being upset about things. And you know, I'm I've been scaffolding for quite a long time, and I've been out in horrible weathers all times of the year. So like bad weather never really affected me because I've just thought to myself, well, I'm out in the rain. I could be at work out in the rain, so this is a lot better. So you know, you. I don't think I had any negative thoughts, really. I, I, I missed people, and that was, that was probably as low as it got was when I just thought about people, and I missed being at home with them. But 
when I was out on the road, I didn't I didn't really have any bad thoughts. I loved it. No, you, you, I mean, I think on the Running Republic, you mentioned that your your childhood was a little bit um, challenging. You know, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> yeah, it was probably challenging in the fact that I kind of like didn't really have any any pathway to go to. So I just I kind of just didn't have anything to look for. So I just drank basically and just didn't have any purpose. And I think a lot of people have been in the same boat. They don't they don't know what they're doing with life, so they just they just drink and take drugs and they don't know what they're doing. So yeah, it was it was challenging, but not challenging, challenging. Yeah, but 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 were those paths not coming back to you? you know, I I quite often think like in my life, you know, when I'm out running, I, I I'll openly turn around and say I have I have thoughts going through my head when I'm out running. I've usually got a podcast going, but then at some point the podcast will just it'll be playing, but my brain doesn't listen and mm. it's thinking of things. And I always think, I wonder if like when I did so and so, what would have happened if I'd have done so and so? And and that's just me on a two hour run. You you running for 12, 12 plus hours a day. You you must have there must have been things like that that you thought about. I thought about all sorts of stuff, really. Um, What's the strangest? Give us the give us the strangest thing you can remember. I talked to a lot of cows. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I know. I even uh, I mean I must have been going a bit mad because I found a tennis ball once and I thought oh this is quite funny so I cut some eye holes in it like out of the film Castaway and I yeah. made this like little tennis ball man and I called him Winston because obviously it's close to the Wilson name and I was yeah. talking to him quite a lot um <laughs> I think I, I think I did go a bit mad talking to cows looking like t- oh, just doing all sorts of weird stuff but that's I was, <laughs> I'm probably a bit like that anyway <laughs> just in reality <laughs> bit of a loner Oh, I've got a vision. You know, if you ever create your own team now, on the shoulder, you've got to have a tennis ball on the shoulder, on the <laughs> shirt, you know. Yeah, Not a real one, just a picture of the tennis ball. It's going to be uh, the greatest ever thing, though, with Heiser. <laughs> How much did it cost? Yeah, six months out there, you know, forgetting about loss loss of salary, because um, I'm going to presume you, 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 weren't, you weren't working unless you had your own business and people were doing it, but I, I don't know that. Um, how much did it actually cost you physically while you were out there? I think I the last time I tallied up, it was about six grand or seven grand. Wow. Yeah. And then obviously I had six months off work, so that was a bit of a tricky one. But Yeah. That's yeah. that's not a lot of money though. That's I mean, I, I would have thought six months, you know, food. Um... Well, yeah, but when you're eating tack tins of like uh chili con carne and boiling the bag rice, you can keep things to a bit of a budget. <laughs> And, and did you ever get to a point um, where you thought, "Oh, I've got to pack the tent, and I need a, a B and B"? Oh yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I stayed in a few B and Bs, and uh, I stayed in a few hotels. Luckily, I got quite good at negotiating some good prices, and I stayed in some really good. I stayed in a place in where was it? In Rye near um, near Hastings. He's just outside yeah. of Hastings, and some guy. He got in contact with me and let me stay in this really, really, really nice hotel for absolutely nothing. And it was, it was. I, I, I thought he was having me on. He said, "Oh, come to this place. I'll let you stay here for nothing." I, I turned up. I walked in. I thought, "Bloody hell, this is a bit posh." Yeah. You know. And I was like, "Surely this guy's winding me up." But lo and behold, I went to the desk. And they said, "Oh, yeah, your room's ready. It's upstairs. You know, and you can have dinner on us." And I was like, "Bloody hell, this is all right." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't even stay in those sort of places when I'm working. <laughs> you know? That's amazing, though. Just fancy something like just somebody just phoning you up and like. But that's what, you know, we talked about, we just touched on the element community. That is what the community is like, the whole running community, yeah. you know. Yeah. We, OCR is just a small niche of that. Yeah. Um, but when you do something like what you did um, back there, it, I mean, it was amazing. The whole six months to run all the way around the coast. One last question on it before we go somewhere else. I mean, it's coming to the 50th anniversaries of this as well. So did you just literally follow the coast and keep the sea in sight all the way? Or yeah. did you actually have a map? I did have a map. I downloaded OS Maps, and I still use that to the, to this day. It's it's a it's a fantastic app, and it's great for getting around. But now I I came in land quite a few times. I mean, sometimes when you was on the, the the on the road and things, it could get a bit dangerous. So I'd come in and do some trails, and if it was a bit boring, I'd do trail. I mean, I love trail running. So mm. every time I was on the road, it was a bit shit. And then every time I looked on the map and I thought there was a bit of a route that looked more fun, I'd go and do that. Oh, look, cats in the background. <laughs> I can see the cat there. <laughs> the cat's just made yeah. an appearance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, so yeah, so, uh, definitely. Um, I've lost where I was now. <laughs> you just said you came in land and, and you sort of ran a few trails and things like that indoors. 
in yeah, rather than still the that's coast. Right, yeah, because because sometimes the roads were just too too dangerous. You know, I remember being up in Scotland, running along the road at one point, and I was on the phone phone to someone, and I was running along, and this bloody massive lorry drove past me, and it was like, and I was like, bloody hell. So I looked on the map and I was like, right, that's it. I'm getting off the road because if I stay on this road, I'm not going to be around for much longer. <laughs> you know, so, I, I it's, hate road running. That's one of my, it's my worst nightmare is road running. So five years ago, what have you been thinking of doing in the last five years? Is there anything that you've, you know, that, that's been sort of eaten away? Because when you're out there, I'm going to say that uh, there would have been things you'd have maybe planning, you know, especially when you're coming to the last leg of this, you must have been thinking of, What's next? What's next? What's, what's been eating away for the last five years? I know you you weren't expecting this question, so... Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, people always ask me what I, I, I expected to do afterwards. And to be honest with you, I never really knew what was going to happen afterwards. I didn't I didn't know that what I'd do would have any impact on my life or if it, if it was or if it wasn't. And then, I don't know, you sort of get back and things don't really change because it's just one of those things that you've done. And, you know, life life is quite like boring at times and you just come back to doing normal life and you have to do the normal stuff that you have to do you know pay the mortgage pay the bills and that takes over sometimes and that's why I like the OCR because that's you know it gives you something something with purpose to do mm -hmm. otherwise I don't know what you'd be doing you know <laughs> you were, I don't know what I'd be doing from nah. one day if I didn't have OCR in my life I'd, I'd, I'd have no idea what I'd be doing no, it definitely gives you purpose. And I think having, no, not so much being OCR, but if you've got a goal and something to, to to strive for, it gives you purpose in life. I mean, it, that might be your job or it might be everything that else that you do, but you've got to have some purpose and it keeps you on the straight and narrow, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think you're quite right. Tra training just keeps me on the straight and narrow, I think. Just, yeah. you know, them endorphins and um, just, I guess, getting out there. I, I'm, gonna, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'll say this now, my listeners don't even know this, but I'm actually going through a little bit of a, a running slump at the moment. Ugh. But I'm um, I'm finding it hard to to. I've, I've got a massive run coming up this year, so I'm, I'm going to try and run 100 miles this year. Never ever done 100 miles, you know. I've never even done over 50 miles in in any race. So I've signed up for 100, try and get me there. And I'm I don't know if it's that that's daunting me, and I'm trying to make an excuse not to do it. Maybe I know I'm you gonna feel do it. if you've got to run so much, and it's like yeah. oh, I've got I've got to put in the running training to. To do this hundred miles, maybe it's that, but yeah, it's, it's horrible it's being in the slum. So You'll get out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm no doubt. You know, um, you know, we, we're doing this, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I made it with a bit of cold at the minute, so I'm actually using that a little bit as an excuse this week. But I've determined that tomorrow morning, I'm actually going to get up tomorrow morning and go for a run. Yeah, um, even if it's only a ten k, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shake it tomorrow. I've got to get up, get my backside out of bed. Five o'clock, get up, shoes on, go for a run, no matter what. Um, That's it. Otherwise, I'll just keep on going down this spiral of not running. You want to write um, it down somewhere, don't you? You just want to write like, 100 miles, get out the door, you wally. <laughs> or something, you know, yeah, just, <laughs> just to look at it. And then as soon as you see that, you think, oh, yeah, I suppose I've got 100 miles to run this year. I better get out the door because I'll be a wally otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> you wally. <laughs> <laughs> you don't use the OCR though. Um, recently, this New Year's Eve, um, brutal run. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, what, I do that every that year. Like? That's a great. I mean, I anyone who's ever done brutal races, they they they've been around since the year dot. I mean, always had races. Um, that particular one, it's just on, it's 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 on my doorstep basically. It's the it's the woods that I train in. Uh, so I've been doing it for the last eight years or something like that. Um, it was a great run. Yeah. Really so we must run. have run it together at some point, about 2016, I think I did it. Is it that's the one with the bog in the middle with the disco yeah. and the smoke? Yeah, bombs uh, and... yeah. So basically, it's also this, almost the same course as they used to use for Hellrunner. I don't know yeah. if you remember Hellrunner. Uh, it's, it, it's basically half of what Hellrunner used to be. And right. they use that bog of doom and, and that bit there. So it's, it's, it's a really good training camp. I think, I think Dan Titcomb in his army days has done a lot of training over the same same area so he knows right. the area quite well and it's 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 great running you know I, I, I know you got i know you got fourth place but was you happy with that would you no no because zach harper zach harper beat me the little <laughs> bastard because we was we was we was battling the whole way <laughs> and he's a little cheeky kick because he was running on my backside the whole time and i knew he was i knew he was playing me because i could i could see and i tried to let him go in front of me at one point but he wouldn't do it so i knew he was playing me about and we got to this hill and he put a surge in i put, mm, 
bastard. <laughs> I think I, I, I'm not as good on the heels as Ian because we trained together quite a lot. And he put this little surge in, and I thought you bastard. But I didn't want to catch him because I thought he might blow out. So then we was running down here, and he just he, he give him credit where credit's due. I mean, he had the better shoes on and that, but he he ran really well down the hills and he got through the box and it was so close. But no, I wasn't happy. I hate being all my friends will tell you there's two worst positions: ten, uh, sorry, eleventh and fourth. I hate being in any of them. <laughs> Outside the top ten, outside the podium. You, oh, they're, right, the worst, isn't they're the worst places ever. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a great yeah. race. I mean, I mean, I I love having a good battle with people. If you if you have a race and you don't get the position you want, but you've had a you've had a good battle with someone, it's you know, you can't argue with it. You put everything in, it's the better result in it. Oh, too right. Yeah. Too right. Was there any banter while you was racing against him? I didn't say a word, but he's got a photo of him behind me and he's like that, I'm putting his thumbs up. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm hoping to go out for a run with him this week or next week or something and I'll give him some stick. So, uh, yeah, he's a good lad. Oh, I, I, there is a little bit of banter in some of these races. You know, I've heard, I've heard it when I used to race and things like that. And I, I, I used to love that when, you know, there's always, there's always someone good who just hangs back, you know, like Zach did with you and... Um, then just all of a sudden, last minute, and I, I was never a sprinter, so I used to get done all the time on the line, you know, like that last yeah. hundred meters. Um, I could never ever time it right, um, or anything, which was surprising because when I played football, I was I used to be quite fast, right? It's a different type of sprinting, isn't it? Than yeah, stop and start, yeah. Um, from that though, OCR games last year, you got fourth place in OCR games, and I'm seeing a pattern here that's two fourths, yeah. Um, but OCR <laughs> games. It, we haven't had anyone on yet or did OCR games. So I'm interested in what that was like. That was fantastic. I mean, Dave Peters, I mean, he is a great person and he puts on a great event. And I think he's trying to do it again this year. And, uh, you know, anyone should do it because he puts on a, an awesome event. It's full of awesome guys. And it, 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 it did show like, you know, I mean, the different events that we had really showed where your strengths were. You know, and it was quite funny over the board because everyone sort of knows where everyone's strengths were. And so you could yeah. see how people were coming in and you, you knew who was going to be the faster guys and you knew who was going to be better at the obstacles. And it all played out. And then when it came to the final race, everyone was so close. It didn't actually matter. <laughs> so, it was good. But, but there was, was it jokers they played on some of the... Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. I think in hindsight, I think now that... You know, we know how it sort of pans out. We could have used our jokers in different places, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference on the the end result. But where did you use yours? Uh, I used mine on the the fast one, where it was the one we was all running. I think everyone right. used it on the same thing. So when we did the laps, and it was last man standing sort of thing. Yeah, but I so think it would have played out better if I used it on the obstacle section because because. I think the way the maths worked on it, you get more points because there's less people using their jokers and and whatnot. Yeah, I guess that's a bit of hindsight though. But did, yeah. did you did you think, oh, I'm, this is the best one for me? I'm going to do well in this, so that's when I'm going to play my joker. Because I had this conversation with Dave when we was talking about it, and I was saying maybe someone would play it on something they're maybe not so good at mm. to to get double the points. You know, well, that's that's um, why I played mine. I played it on the on the, the running bit because running's not my strongest strongest bit. So I played it on that, but I didn't realise that everyone else used it on the same one, which didn't you know it made it not as important because everyone doubled their own score. So it was just like everyone yeah. racing the same race. Yeah. Whereas if you if you'd done it on something maybe that you'd have won, mm. you would have I would have doubled, doubled your... my points on doubled points because no, yeah. One, yeah. So, but yeah. you know, it is what it is. So I, I, know, I know he's planning. I know he's planning on doing one this year, um, and I'm really interested in you know popping down and watching it and and that because that'd be decent. Yeah, yeah, it, it looked like a great spectacle to watch. You know, some of the Instagram footage and the Facebook foot, footage I saw. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be pretty good. I yeah, mean, Matt Turner should have gone and filmed all of that and done yeah, a huge yeah. video, shouldn't it? He should have. I know. I'm pretty sure because I spoke to him about it, and I think he was busy or something. So I think I think he did have it in his mind to do something like that. He does a good video, doesn't he, old Mark? Turner? I love his videos. You yeah, know, he like, does um, a good video. But he says yeah. he says it's so time consuming, and and you know it probably is. It would take me about six years to do a one little video. But I I can vouch for that. I can vouch for that. <laughs> it is such time consuming when you're trying to get that perfect picture, and um, you know. And you, can, you don't have to be perfect, but you get 
we go to high rocks and we take three cameras mm. um and we'll we'll get fa- six hours of footage and you're trying to put six hours of footage into a 15 30 minute yeah you know you've got a, so much cutting so much editing and yeah it's it's a two three day job it's, it is a job it is a we need feddy on it mm. um because fed is amazing yeah, that's a professional <laughs> job isn't it or something yeah <laughs> yeah you should get her doing it <laughs> Well, and it's time, isn't it? I mean, we 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 all struggle for time. Mm. You know, time's like a, a thing that we all struggle to have, and it's just one of those things that people aren't getting paid for these things, and to give up their time when their time, especially especially like Feddy, because she's racing, so she's training. Yeah. That's probably her time that she's training. It's just difficult. You know? How do, how do you fit training with your job? Because you're a scaffolder, and that's long hours. Mm. You know, I mean, you're up at the you're up at, as soon as it gets light. You you're up there putting it up. You're yeah. taking it down. Some, I guess in the summer, I've seen scaffolders where I live taking scaffolding down at eight, nine o'clock. At yeah, night. I won't do that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm not all after the money like they are. Um, if I wanted to, I could, but no, I, I have, a, I, I, I'm, I don't complain about anything at work. I will do any job. I will go. I will carry stuff up thousands of stairs. I will work in the crappiest conditions, but I will not work later than half <laughs> or, or on a weekend. <laughs> And I'm known for that. I'll just, I'll, they don't even bother asking because that's not me. That's training time. Yeah. And, and I get that. So, I mean, that's, you're really religious with that. And that's absolutely great. What does a training week look like for you then? So, usually it's always when I get home from work. So, I get home, training starts about half five. And that could be any, I mean, it depends what part of the year you're in. I mean, I am, I, I do train under Brack and Cracker. He's like my coach and he's set it my, um plan really and sort of taught me how to train in so many words um but yeah it starts half five this time of year it's just a lot of grindy stuff a lot of slow slow miles keeping everything really easy not putting anything too strenuous on and then as the as the year progresses i'll start doing more sort of functional stuff towards ocr every other week doing like an ocr circuit and just building on the time rather than speed or anything so i'll probably run the same pace doing an ocr circuit and then over the weeks progress it'll sort of just increase in time rather than speed until it's sort of race season and then it's mainly just maintaining race fitness i suppose so yeah is it is it most weekends are you some some gym you know pt barn rumble fitness uh, like I do one. try and get down down nuts when I can. It's the closest yeah. one to us, and it's, it's yeah, it's a good facility. I try and pop down Rumble when I can, or whenever they got an event going on, because I just love those guys down there. So yeah, yeah, Rumble and and nuts, the two training places I end up going mostly. And, and I mean, now Mark's a little bit involved with nuts. Nuts is becoming much more technical. Yeah, than, he's, than he's ever fantastic. Has been. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I've been running nuts since since I started running OCR, and it's a course that really really suits me um and mark dixon's always like as soon as he's sort of got on board he's he's put that technical aspect into nuts uh some people don't like it but you know that's what ocr is and if ocr races want to be competitive in europe and around the world or well, yeah around the world then we need to have some sort of um diff- difficulty in the obstacles i mean they're not too bad but we need that technical ability to get to these sort of european races and to compete at a good level so having that, having his input there, I mean, he's a European champion, he's a world champion, he knows very well what what is needed to become competitive in those sort of races. So yeah. his input in nuts is, is, is really, really good. Uh, yeah. But what's, I, I, I'm going to ask you a tip now, because I, I have a, a lot of my listeners know this, but I have a bi, so was it not a biannual? No, because that's, that's twice every year. Every two years, I go down to nuts. So I do a year, miss a year out, do a year. And, I do this because I think I first went down in 2012 and then I went down in 2013 and there was no difference in the course. Mm. Was, there was nothing whatsoever. So ever since then, and I love nuts, don't get me wrong, I love it. It's raw. It's Back then it was raw. It was very natural, very muddy, very much proper OCR, you know, and, and that. But there wasn't enough change. So I've always, mm. from that point onwards, I've always gone down every other year. Mm. And... I've never completed four laps. So, you know, and I don't mind this. I've, I've attempted it twice and both times um, I've DNF'd um, in terms of I've done three laps um, and never got my four because I've never made that cutoff time. Partly because of my own fault both times because the first time I got to the, the chimney, you know, the tyre chimney, yeah. I got to that and there was a queue. There was a huge queue and I waited 
and I waited and I, and I think I queued for about 40 minutes and then I yeah. missed the cutoff time by 15. Um, and then the last time was I got injured, I hurt myself and ended up walking the third lap and I'd, I'd missed the cutoff time for the fourth. Mm. So, um, so I'm back this year. What's the best tip you can give to anyone who's going to go for four laps at nuts? Don't run too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really the secret? Yeah, then? yeah. Just don't run too fast and have the best time ever. I mean, I love nuts. It's one of those races you can just sort of you run, you're happy, you can talk to people, and because you do laps and there's other people on the course, you can run past people like, "All right, how you doing?" And just have little chats and things. It's quite a fun little course. Yeah, but just don't run too fast. It's it's a grind. Nuts is a grindy course, and that's why I like it. It's not about speed and i've i've beaten some really really fast people at nuts because it's not about it, it, speed doesn't play into it i mean it does play into it but not as much as some other races you know you need to just put that one foot in front of the other and maintain that speed the whole time i mean i yeah. think i can pretty much do every lap within 30 seconds to a minute of each other every time i do nuts it's, it's very every lap's pretty bang on and i think that's how you got to do it just to keep ticking by yeah I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm so looking forward to. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to two reasons. It's awards night as well, so it's yeah. it's double it's double reasons for me to go down there this year. Um, but I, I'm I've signed up for Limitless, but my plan is to get that. I need that four that four lapper. That is that's my goal. I've, it's been my goal since 2012. Um, I've never ever DNF'd any other race like I've done at, at Nuts. Um, Fingers no, crossed uh, on fairly good weather. <laughs> yeah. there's um, so much water that's uh, i think people don't realize i mean even if it doesn't feel like air cold there's so much water on that course especially in, in winter it just gets through you and because you because it's a grind you're not moving fast so then you just get colder and colder and colder and colder i, I think i learned that quite early on to put a, a cheap wind jacket on you know yeah um, yeah I, I was a bit frightened the, fir the first time i put one on i was frank so i was thinking well I'm trapping the water inside it. You know, you, you, you've got to do the jump, you know, the, the jump into the water mm. from the high ledge. I'm thinking at that point, I'm now caught with submerged, insides wet. I don't see what help and what benefit I'm going to gain from it. Um, but you do, don't you? you? Just Because you don't get that wind yeah. on you. To yeah, every you time I've done winter, I've always put a wind bluff on every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that would might tip to anyone who's going to go and do it, you know, clothing-wise, get that on and, um, and that. Um, yeah, 100%. I'm going to take you back a little bit because you said when you did brutal, you wore the wrong shoes. So I want to know what shoes you wear. Well, no, I I I, I had good shoes. I had the uh, eye rocks on. It's just that Zach had the mud claws on, which have a lot better grip. Because <laughs> I tried catching him going down that hill, and I was like, "Where the bloody hell is he?" Because I was like, I could see him, and I was like, "He's caning it downhill." And I was like, "Oh!" But well, then I found out he had the mud claws in. I was like, "Well, he's got better grip." It's just my excuse, <laughs> you know. It was just my excuse. Uh, I, I I rate the grip on my eye rocks. Yeah, they're Doesn't really it? good. They are they are phenomenal. But you know, mud claws when you when you're bombing it down really loose yeah. stuff, they they just grip. Uh, it's it's minimal difference really. But you know, there's it's a my bit only difference in weight. Though, isn't there? There's uh, a bit of difference in weight in shoes though, because I'm I'm sure that when or the mud claws I had, I mean I haven't had innovate for a while now because I swear the shrink and I still stand by. Yeah, that. they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you agree with me. And so I had my club, but everyone, everyone I had prior, um, before going to VJ, and that they, were, they always tend to be felt they're quite heavy run, for running on. Yeah, yeah, could do. I mean, I've got a pair of um, uh, what's the rock lights, and they're quite heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the X Talons were the ones that that weren't. So mm. I had the X Talons, but they were the ones that really shrink. I only got one pair out of them. And then they shrunk like it must have. It, it felt like they shrunk a size and a half. Without a doubt, without a doubt, I I said that all along. Um, I think I had about yeah. three pair of them, but literally I would wear them. And I, and I back then I I mean I put my sh shoes in the wash. Everyone knows I'm, I don't know if you know, but I put my shoes in the wash. But I always them with paper and that to dry them out naturally, so they shouldn't shrink. And, and none of my others had, but those always did. I've actually got some Innovate G three hundreds at the moment. The trail flies. Yeah. And I am impressed. These have not shrank. So luckily I'm impressed with these. Yeah, I think I mean shoes are all the time, they're getting better and better. So yeah. fingers yeah. crossed. But I never wash them. I just I just spray them with a hose or just chuck them under the tap and then just leave them out to dry somewhere in the corner. <laughs> My wife would go crazy if I do that. They have to go and wash. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the UK OCR series and who's up because you're gonna you're gonna be our new co-host with um Becky. And yeah. you're going to be with, with Will. So Will's going to host it still. 
Becky's going to be on and you're going to be there to replace Mark while Mark takes a bit of a, a hiatus um, and gets himself back and fitness and that. We don't know how long your contract is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of big big shoes to fill, isn't it? Trying to take over Mark, really. <laughs> He's such a good character, so hopefully I'll do him justice. Has, has he given you any tips, or has he? Have you have you been back nah, in festival? He, he, he just gives me abuse. <laughs> <laughs> he gives everyone abuse. Yeah, yeah, he does. So have you been back and well? Get, first of all, do you listen to Who's Hot? Have you listened yeah. to it in the past? Have yeah, I, I, I love I love Who's Hot. It's a, it's a great podcast, and it is it fires you up for the race. So yeah. yeah, it's really good. And and since since I found out I was going to be sort of taken over now, you know, I, I got on Instagram and had a look through and thought, oh, I better I better keep on top of things and see who's who's racing well. And I mean, I think Mark knows that I always follow people on Strava and I'm always stalking people to see how well they're training anyway, because I'm always like looking through Strava and like, oh, he's training, doing this and doing this. And so I think Mark knows that. And I think that's why he gave me the shout out for it. So. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, you, and I know you've done a lot of races. I know you've been, I want to say you've been around a bit, but that probably sounds a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been around the OCR scene, you've, you've run a few races, you, you know your way around the course. You are um, in the top echelons of, of OCR. So, and I think that's why we, we wanted you on. And I know everyone's excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited it's, I think it. this year is going to be really, really good and really competitive. And because we've got trials for the FISO World Championships, I know for a fact that everyone's putting in extra efforts in places where they may have been, you know, a little bit lack last year. So they're, they're putting more and more training emphasis in their weaknesses. And I think this year is going to be really competitive. And I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. Me too. Now, did you see the Scottish series, McTuff? I did. That just I this did. Weekend? And there was a bit of an unknown name with the guys. Um, I forget his name off the top of my head. Russell, but... Russell Walsh. Yeah, so I did a bit of Googling of him on the um, on the Instagrammers, and I was like, oh, this guy looking a bit handy. So he could be a guy to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, beat Gareth, you know. And, yeah. Sorry, Gavin, yeah, beat Gavin. Gavin. Yeah, Gavin's no a phenomenal. Feat. Yeah, that is no easy feat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Gavin and... likes the cold as well. So. It's all right. And I don't know if you know, but Russell won Beach Ballistic last year as well. Right. So yeah. he is he is a little bit of a runner. I I wouldn't yeah. I'm hoping that he's gonna come down south and um, oh, you bet, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to come race with all of us down here. I mean it's good to have all these competitive races, but yeah, we look forward to it. So. Yeah. And we've got um we've got Cal Bell coming this yeah. year. So Cal Bell's back for his second season. Only ran two events last year. I right. know he's keen to keen to get up there in the men. Um in the women. Maybe Kate Steelwell's going to be. Yeah, Kate Steelwell's up. always been a bit of a favourite of mine on the women. I'm, I've, I've seen her. She's, she's phenomenal at nuts. She's great at nuclear. She's good obstacle racer. You know, she went to be fair. She's good all round her. And you know, I've, I've always backed her as a, as a person to look out for whenever she's racing. So she's good. It's, it's a shame about Louise Ferryman this year because she's had an injury just, just recently. I'm hoping she'll get back soon. Fingers yeah. crossed because she's a phenomenal racer. And there's some girls at Rumble. You know, I think there's some girls down there that we need to look out for, like Pip and um, uh, bloody hell, forget the other one on. But Pip definitely, and there's a few <laughs> others. But when I've got my notes, especially for who's are, I'll give you the proper names. <laughs> and up in up in McTuff as well, we had Isla in the women's coming second. Now I don't know if you know Isla because Isla no. is very very new to OCR. She has only ever done Total Warrior in the past. Right. Um. So before before Total Warrior became competitive. She used to go out for the last three years um, and she used to win them. So she's now joined British Obstacle Sports and she's going to be attending some of the races as well. So and I don't think she's as proficient on the obstacles. I'm going to be really honest and say she's not as proficient on the obstacles, but she has the running speed. Good. And that's that counts for so much because, mm. I mean, we all know that how hard it is to get speed on races as opposed to getting the strength on obstacles. It's a lot easier to get proficient at obstacles quicker than it is to get the speed for running. If you're a good runner, you can you can cross over quite quickly, but it doesn't work so much the other way. So, yeah, yeah it'd be interesting. be really interesting. Looking forward to it. Chris, I'm looking forward to having you on Who's Up and listening to the podcast before anyone else listens to them because I, I'm tripped that way. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Before oh, I let you go... You can give as many shout outs as you like to whoever you want to, if you want to, there is no pressure, but go. I'll give a couple out. A big shout out to uh, Darren Martin, my uh, biggest opponent 
to date and I can't wait to be racing against you next year or this year might I say um Raffaella Dio Nutrition I'll give her a shout out um just for helping me with all my nutrition this year but if anyone wants to send me any information about who they think is going to be good this year as well if you can hit me up on um what's my Instagram handle is uh, OCR dude uh, just give me any information so I can be good when I actually get on the podcast and I've got information to to throw back at Becky as well because she's quite analytical and I'm not as much. So if I can throw some decent stuff out there, it'd be good. So, But no, a um, big shout out to High OCR team as well. All my boys from there, Barrow Buchanan, Jason Wright and Dean Swalk, been with the start and they know I love them. So yeah, that's about all. <laughs> Kate Stillwell, welcome back to UK OCR. To all my listeners, Kate Stillwell, Stillwell is my favourite grass grower. Is that the best way to put it, Kate? <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> and the, also the only one. The only one, yeah. <laughs> no, I guess we better put a little context on that because people need to go back and listen to your interview with me, don't they? Because, you know, we are we are talking about actual grass and we are not talking about the, the herbal stuff. Um, so people do need to go back and, and listen to the proper podcast. But thanks for coming back on. How are you? How have you been keeping yourself? Very good, thank you. I've wintered well. <laughs> wintered well? We're going to talk about something in a minute. We'll talk about McTuff in a minute. You have wintered so well, you know, flying back to, to first place in the first race of the season. Um, have, you been, <laughs> have you been wintering abroad? Have you been wintering in this country? No, definitely wintering in this country. I absolutely love the cooler weather. Yeah, it really suits me. And I love mud, which suits me even more in obstacle racing. <laughs> <laughs> as always, as always. Have, have you been training a lot through the winter? Is it, has it been a, a big training regime? Have you stepped it up or have you just been keeping it steady to what you've been doing? Um, well, when things go to plan, I do plenty of like, run training during the winter and a bit less cycling. But yeah, I get to go out onto the trails a lot more and I really enjoy that and do a bit more climbing indoors as well with, you know, um, shorter evenings for work. Just means I get to go climbing when I come home. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Um, I guess we were talking a bit, a bit about McTuff. First of all, what made you go all the travel all that way up to <laughs> Scotland for a race that is like absolutely freezing at the best of time um, in the middle of winter? What, what made you go up there? I really wanted to show some support to the new series up there, to be honest. Um, and I thought, what better way to kickstart the year than to go up there and, you know, throw your cap into the ring and, yeah, just really get some momentum going for the series, hopefully. Brilliant. Was it your first ever McTuff? I'm, I, I haven't seen your name on any of the other results, so I'm hoping <laughs> that I'm right by saying it was your first. No, no. Um, I must have flown under the radar in 2019 and um, it was so foggy up there. You couldn't see the start line. I couldn't see the hill that it was on. And I was pretty surprised this year when I turned up. It was like a whole new event. <laughs> <laughs> because you could see, obviously, I get that. How good, how good was the start? Was it everything it lived up to, you know, with the, with the Highland band playing? Was it everything it lives up to? It really was. The Scottish people are so friendly as well and outgoing and everyone wants to just talk to you and just warm up together. And it was I liked the the mass start, you know. I think it wasn't difficult to to get towards the front, you know, with people that wanted to be competitive. Um yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I think the Highland band as well, fantastic. It really sets the scene. <laughs> Did you go up and acclimatize a few days before, or was it just the day before you went up? Um, so I went up on Friday and went climbing and then went running in Pentlands, sort of got myself a bit lost um, running Pentlands. I thought I was only going to do a 5k run and ended up doing nine and a half and went the wrong way up a, after the trail that I thought I was going to go down and uh, spiced it up a little bit, climbing up a hill that I ended up sort of scrambling up and got to the top and there was this huge main path. <laughs> oh, I, I can't talk about getting lost because that is my that I minute. Mean, that is twenty twenty three for me. Everywhere I've been, oh, no. I've got lost in twenty twenty three. So, so a couple of oh, a, wow. a day, a day and a half. Yeah. Night, <laughs> yeah. a, a day and a half of acclimatizing. Um, did you register the night before then? So my first question: Did you register the night before? Because I hear on the day there was a couple of um, hiccups with registration in terms of. 1,000 people trying to register in space of an hour. 
Yes, um, I did register the night before. I went and did some other like climbing and things like that at um, the International Climbing Centre up there. And yeah, I just happened to go for dinner with a few OCR people and they said, oh, you can register the night before. So it was a bit more luck than judgment on my behalf. But um, yeah, no, registered the night before. So the lovely, friendly start time of 11 o'clock was well received. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't get many OCRs that start at 11 o'clock, do we? You no, know, not at all. So, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. And thought, oh, we don't know what to do, really. Twiddle your thumbs for a little bit. Yeah. I guess that's because of the mass start, because we, we're used to seeing waves going off to accommodate people. But with the mass start, you can obviously just start it later, can't you? And you know. Yeah, and I wonder if it's something, you know, just to encourage more people to come along because it's a bit more, oh, if you're on like maybe a night shift or if you've got children to sort out, it's not so, maybe it's more inclusive by having it at 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Did it, did it change your morning prep in terms of, you know, getting up, um, fueling up before you get to the race or did you just push it back a little bit? Did you do any changes? Oh, yeah, I ranted a lot more to my partner on the phone. <laughs> 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 how much i disliked having to sit in the car and um and, and wait around no i didn't i didn't change my morning prep too much i'm i'm not a, a person that eats before a race generally i have my my set snacks that i'll have and um then i warm up at a set time before the race and you know have my music on and everything and so it didn't upset me too much <laughs> there's bigger things to worry about for me what, what about kit wise what what do we go with kits um ashamedly so shorts and vest as per usual wow so no no shorty no no neoprene whatsoever just straight up running running gear yeah just for running gear um for a warm-up i'll have like my um my shower proof jacket on it's really flimsy and light but i just yeah. keep the chill off while i'm warming up and then take that off off you know during the start line so i did listen to the podcast and i reminded myself that they do take a little bit of a while in the start line so kept that on till the last minute and then whipped it off to start um but yeah for me i get so hot the second i start running um it doesn't matter what weather it is i just seem to get very warm <laughs> wow wow and i mean talk a little bit about the race i mean how did it how did it go for you did you set off hot did you did you leave from the front I got absolutely battered by the um, by the American footballers, and I got beaten from pillar to post, and ended up about 150 meters back from the ladies. Oh no! So that didn't quite go to plan, but um, yeah, after that we were running around the circuit, so it was a lot of the stones, you know, the um, I can't remember what they're called. Josh is going to be like the, like the gravel, like the um, runoff of the cars. So when they yes. the gravel, they skid on it, don't they? Yeah. That's exactly the stuff. Um, we were doing a lot of running in that, so it's like running in quicksand, you know, around the track. You were thinking yeah. you're giving a lot of effort, but you weren't going very fast. Um, so yeah, made a, a decent amount of time, I think, on that. And then we went into a carry, a nice two kilometre long carry, which uh, which suits me quite nicely. <laughs> I heard that it was, was it really actually two kilometres? The tire carry was two kilometres because I've heard exaggerations, <laughs> and I'm thinking. It, was it, wasn't it? I think it was a bit shy of that, but it was a decent way. And it was in and out of a stream and um, like up and down a little bits of boggy areas and things like that. So, it, yeah, they were very strict on, you know, the first tie you pick up was the one that you take. And no, I thought it was a really good way of stringing people out as well, you know, instead of yeah. having people all on top of each other. It worked well. That's cool. Um, I mean, I know, the, I know they ran out of them later on for some of the, the fun runners, which th that's acceptable. But I've, I've I've spoke to a few competitive runners and no one said the competitive didn't run without a tyre. So I guess that's good in its own right, isn't it? Yeah, there was a huge pile of them. I was really surprised when I came back and, you know, they were all out on course. But I guess that's the problem with having a, a very long carry. You know, they're just not back in quick enough. Yeah, yeah. But a really great idea still, though. So, yeah, I was I was impressed by it. <laughs> but maybe because it didn't affect me too much up front. <laughs> So it was either the fast ones or the really slow ones got to carry tyres, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else has shucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how much water was there on the course? 
um, refreshment water or dunking yourself in water? Right. So, um, I'm not going to go down the refreshment side because we, <laughs> we touched on that on the Swift Harbour the weekend. So <laughs> let's talk about the dunking waters, the, the streams, the rivers, things like that. How, how much was the out there? I thought just the right amount, to be honest. Right. <laughs> Enough that you could run through quite a lot of it. Um, you know, you could still keep warm on the course. So the wind was quite brutal. Um you know, if you get if you were liable to getting cold, the wind was going to make you very cold. Um, but yeah, we were in and out of water quite a bit. There's an effective use of the water, the natural water hazards, I'd say, in and out of a lot of ditches. You know, crawling through a lot of it as well. There's a lot of running water down hills that they were using. Uh, yeah, I I liked how they used it to slow us down. Brilliant, brilliant. When did you realise you'd taken the lead? <laughs> um. Fairly early on, um, right. it was within half a uh, circuit on the racetrack. Yeah. So, yeah, I had the guys in front of me, which always spurs me on because I'm I'm always racing them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. What, what, who was you running with? What, which were the which of the guys was you was you, was you chasing down or trying to stay ahead of? Can you remember? I had Rubinovich near me uh, quite a bit to begin with, and then as we spaced out a little bit more, say I think probably about four or five k in, he obviously sped away on the obstacles because he's just a machine. Yeah. Um, Gavin and Russell were well away. You know, they were they were they were they twinkling my eye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we called them at the start, and that was it. <laughs> um, but you know, I had Ramunas near me, and he's working so hard on his running. I loved seeing him out on the course, and he's always so encouraging. So he was around me, um, and then a few other of the Scottish guys we'd met the night before. So it was really nice to be chatting to them on the way round. Wow, I, I never see Ramunas without a smile on his face. Oh my goodness, you know, he's relentless. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he is, isn't he? Um, I, I love him. He's always got this, the biggest grin on his face. He looks like he's always enjoying it. No matter what, you know, I've seen people that signed him in so much pain and agony, and he's just smiling away, just getting on with his business and and that. Um, yeah, yeah. He's got such great training advice as well. I could talk to him all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to move us on a little bit because we get to about 10k in, you know. Oh. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I hear you had a little incident, shall we say? <laughs> um, I might have had a, a small stumble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean it was a bit more than a small stumble. I've, I've heard that there was, um, let's just say, a lot of blood pouring out of your leg. Am I right in saying this? There potentially was. Yes, <laughs> I managed to, you know, negotiate some really tough terrain, <laughs> but yeah. I was doing the um, the slalom up and down. I felt like about ten of them, and wasn't technical at all. It was just a bit of mossy grass that had been cut at some point in the season you know so yeah. I could see my feet and for some reason I, I think I just didn't pick my own feet up properly and sort of scuffed my foot maybe I did trip over something I don't know but um fell straight over down the hill and I just assumed because it was cold that my knee you know smarted a bit from that and I thought I'm not looking down just stiff up a lip and get on with it so it wasn't until 1k later and I, I'd heard some rumours about someone saying, you know, there's blood. And I was like, oh, it must be my hand, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> there's only a small cut on that. Um, and then, yeah, when I eventually looked down after, you know, a time angle, I saw a flap of skin hanging off my knee. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm actually cringing just thinking about it. <laughs> oh. so there was a, a fair bit of blood coming out. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've spoken to Katie Joyce, and Katie Joyce tells me, you know, she was, um, you was like, oh, it's only a scratch, it's only a scratch, and she's good. Come with me, I'm cleaning it. She was proper playing mother with you, wasn't she? Oh, definitely. Yeah, she got her first aid kit out, marched me back to the car, um, then sent me to the paramedics. <laughs> she's a good woman. <laughs> she is. She's best interest at art, bless her. Absolutely best interest. Oh, definitely. At art. Yeah, they got me off, they packed me off to um, non-emergencies and ended up stitching it up, much to my protest. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, couldn't you just stick it back together? <laughs> <laughs> you were just getting the super glue out of the uh, the box, was you? Well, say. you could, me and Ramunas were well away, hoping that you, you know, could just put a little bit of glue on that and just, you know, wipe it clean. They've, the paramedics said I couldn't. <laughs> oh, there's nothing worse than that, is there? Um, what about the place where... 
people took the wrong turning. What's what's your thoughts on that? Because we know oh, um, a few people took the wrong turnings, you know, and they've owned up to it, and you know they've they've been DQ'd. You know, God bless them for doing that. What what yeah? What, for your in your mind, what 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 did you see at that point? Because it was, I mean, if I'm right in saying it was just after a tire wall, is that right? Yeah, we'd done a lot of switchbacks. Just it was near to the finishing line. You sort of went into the main you know the center of the course yeah. and there was a lot of switchbacks and you've, you've effectively ran about 3k inside there um but yeah the part that everyone got a bit well some people got a bit confused and you sort of came out onto a middle road and either side was a bank of tires and I can see how they went wrong so I remember coming out onto the road and thinking where are we going and look to where the tape went and it was you went over the wall and followed the tape um yeah. but yeah I can see how they went wrong but yeah I'm glad that they they owned up to it and you know DQ'd themselves That's good on them for doing it I appreciate it yeah I, I think it's right I don't think anyone meant to do it um no, no, and I, I, really I, I don't do know happened. there were tears from one particular individual you know um and I'm not going to name that person um but there were tears from one individual because she didn't want to be accused of, of cheating and or taking anyone's oh, places and and things like that. And blessed, you know, I'm seeing it a little bit like, and, and I'm talking to you know someone who deals with this type of sport with golf. That the the honesty that happened on that thing is just like golf honesty. You know, it's like, hey, I've made a mistake. I need to take my penalty or whatever. And I think it's yeah. great that we've got that. We've got that honesty in the sport and integrity, and I think that's huge actually because it's it shouldn't ha have happened yeah. and you know down to the organizers to perhaps make it more clear and i think in the wind and the bad weather beforehand that could have been clearer so it was very unfortunate to get that far into a race as well it's mentally gutting yeah i could only yeah. imagine I've, it could happen to anyone shocked shocked but you got the first win of the season you know you're up yeah. there you're, you're top of the scottish OCR series now. Um, next, <laughs> next up is it? It's Gavin's race. Is it Tartan Warrior up there? It is indeed. So hundred meters. Are you on your way? Are you on your way? Have you booked your tickets? <laughs> I am very likely to go. I've just got to confirm it in my diary. Make sure I, I see that there's nothing clashing. So I'd like to do it. I've just got to pull my finger out. Really. <laughs> <laughs> What is what is the ultimate goal this year? Is it? I mean, I'm, oh you, you're, you're ahead of the Scottish series, and I get that, you know. But this year is it's going to be a very competitive year. You know, we've got the we've got the Scottish series, we've got the UK OCR series, we have got five sole Europeans, the world champ. Everything's coming this year for a competitive OCR athlete. This has got to be one of the most competitive years out there. What what yeah. what's your goal? this year uh, i like to keep a, a very loose goal because i don't like getting injured and um, i don't take it very well my plans changing so i try and keep it quite loose in all honesty i've got a sort of like a, a rough plan i just think see how it goes at the start of the year but if it all goes up in the air then try not to get too upset about it and just adjust the sails a little bit you know if it, if the running's not possible then i'll go on to cycling if running and biking's going well i'll keep doing a bit of duathlons as well in there um i like time trialing on the bike as well during the midweek yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but also i want to keep on supporting both the series because i really think it's important we get this you know the movement going you know more people involved in it and more people do it maybe you know I don't post a lot on the internet, but, you know, if even someone thinks, oh, I could do a bit of that and feels like they can join in, you know, that'd be fantastic. Too right, too right. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to say thank you for coming, Kate. It's <laughs> absolutely brilliant talking to you. I could talk to you all day and I say this to all of everyone who says, <laughs> what was your favourite podcast? I say, I've got many, many favourites, but Kate Silver can come on my podcast any day. <laughs> and I hope that this year we chat plenty. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again. Men's winner of McTuff, Russell Walsh. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm fine, yes. Yourself? I'm really, really good. Russell, I mean, I predicted your win. I don't know if you know this, but I actually predicted your win. I said um, that you was the man to watch and you proved me right. So um, kudos to me. Thank you for that. 
Um, <laughs> McTuff, how did you find it? First event, first of all, first time you've been to McTuff, isn't it? It is I first time, yeah. Cool. And what did you think of the event? Cool. Um, <laughs> so the training up to it was uh, pretty brutal, you know, getting in the cold water and trying to get used to that. But uh, the event itself, it, it was all right. It was a bit of a mess up with the marking. Um, I don't think anybody checked it in the morning, so I kept getting lost. Uh, second and third players kept catching us up and things like that, but uh, managed to hold on to first and uh, get the win. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So did you, did you take the lead right from the start then? Because I, I didn't go. I'm going to be honest. I stayed in my lovely warm house down here in Barnsley. I didn't go. Um, the, the brass, the, the, um, I want to say the brass band, but if I say that, I know Martin Gemmell's going to shout at me and get called. So the um, Highland band played, you know, the start line, all that, all that buzz. You set off. Did, did you, was your plan to set off hot, to set off and, and take the lead? Uh, yeah, I make a quick start and just hang on in there like so I think pretty much by the first corner I had the lead and that was that was me um, mm-hmm. second place I coming was it Stuart or Craig or something like that um, he did pass us because I failed one of the obstacles right. um, for the first time and you get two goals luckily um, and he passed me then um, and then yeah got through which, it and got my band and uh, got past him like which obstacle did you fail? it was one of the first rigs um, you kind of Hung on the barrels and transferred onto a down down pipe. Yeah, uh, yeah. and the pipe that I grabbed onto it was just soaking wet. And as soon as I gripped onto it, I just slid down it like a like fine and Sam really. Um, wow. So I jumped over and had a go on the one, then then the one next to it, and it was fine. Got through was, it all right. was that like dew on the pipe then? So I mean, you being first there, I wouldn't have thought anyone had touched it. Was it dew or? Well, I think the seven K runners because we all set off together. Um, I think this, some of the seven K runners had been through it as well. Right. Uh, so, so some of it was pretty wet by the time we got back round to it. Um, and yeah, but just just make sure I got up got up high on the pipe this time and uh, got through it all right. So. Wow, wow. You just touched on then that you got lost a few times. Where did you Where did you get lost? Was it Was it marking wise or was it running head down just trying to run fast? Was it your fault? Their fault? Whose fault? No, no. It was, it was quite badly marked. To be fair. Right. Um, yeah. We, you do you do a full lap of the of the circuit and come back and we got to got back to the start line and was asking the marshals where did we go and even they didn't have a clue where we was meant to be going. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, there was there was using a very thin orange orange rope for markings uh, mm-hmm. and often it would just be marked to a dead end and it was like you, you didn't know which side of the the barrier to be on and things like that. Um, so was that the type of a rope that you get you know like hay bales that you wrap hay bales in? Was it that type of rope? It was a little bit thicker. A little bit right. thicker, yeah. But a lot of the barriers were blown over, and yeah, it was. It could have been better marked. It should. It should I don't think anybody checked it in the morning. I think that was probably the biggest issue. Um, but we, we got through. I got round it anyways. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, I mean, I said to Katie as well earlier that you're quite lucky that, that you know when you went over that tire wall and there were the two tire bankings at the side, you, yeah. you obviously chose the right di- the right way where several runners later on didn't. Yeah, well, luckily second place is right behind us and he's done it before. Um, and I just waited for him to come over. I was like, where do we go? <laughs> and he's, he was like, I think it's this way. And yeah, we was back on the rigs then. So uh, that, that was yeah. um, that was Gavin. I mean, Gavin, about, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, you've been, if I remember rightly, I know you've been training over at Gavin's place, haven't you? No, not Gavin's place. So I started training at uh, Mark Huggins at uh, Hoik Freestyle. Oh, right, right. So, yeah. yeah, I've been training down there. So he's helped us getting on the rigs and things that are practicing on them. Uh, but yeah, it's the first time I met Gavin, really. Right. <laughs> I mean, you've not been in OCR that long, have you? Well, about three years, if I remember I seen you rightly, about three years ago, was it? 2019? First, first, no, first race was, um, oh, was it 2019? I can't remember, actually. It was a, it was a Scottish 32-mile... Uh, um, Beach Ballistic? Spot. Oh, Spartan? No, Spartan, Spartan, right. yeah. It was, I think it was September 2021, actually. Right. So it's even yeah. sooner. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I had, a, had a good few races last year. Uh, I tried to do the series, um, but uh, I ended up pulling out of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you did, you did yeah. beach ballistic, though, didn't you? you last year, yeah. You won beach ballistic? No, second place. Second place at beach ballistic. Uh, Daniel was it Titcom. Won beach? Daniel Titcombe. Daniel, Dan Titcombe, yeah. Dan Titcombe went, yeah. So we all got um, lost on that one as well. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Seems to be a bit of a theory. If I I <laughs> Note to self: don't run with don't run with Russell. 
Uh, again, that was that was the Marshall Centre the wrong way on that one. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know we all did. You? Apparently, you all went about a kilometre off track and came back on that one, didn't you? Yeah, we ran through the golf courses and everything. Like, so, yeah. Wow, wow. So, first first place, top points. Um, yeah. What what's what's the future plans? Is it more Scottish series? Are we going to see you running in the UK OCR series as well and challenging some of the big boys? I'm not too sure what UK ones I'll do. Uh, but I'm definitely signed up to the next three uh, Scottish. Right. Um, so I'm definitely going to hit the Scottish ones this year. Um, just obviously with the UK so far down the country. Um, it's a bit, of a bit of a trouble to get down there. But definitely I might, might do Bitch Ballistic. I haven't signed up for it yet. Um, right. And like Total Warrior as well. Do, maybe do them because that's two and a half hours for me. Like so, um, Total Warrior could be a big race this year. You know, um, yeah. last year we had Dan Titcom go. Um James Burton, but we also had Carl Bell go for his very first race last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's where that. one, one of my mistakes were for the UK series because I ended up racing the Friday night instead of the Saturday morning. So oh, right. I points on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a good race, so I'll probably go down and do it again. Yeah. Um, are, are you a, what's your background? I'm, we're quick, so we've got about five minutes left. Do you quit, what's your background in running? Uh, so I probably started running about 2019, 2018 fully, um, just basically in the fells. Um, I live at the bottom of the Cheviot Hills, so it's just out the back door and straight into the fells. So uh, that's that's my background of running. I, I've, I've done a lot of mountain biking for years. Um, so yeah, I haven't been into running for massively a long time. <laughs> so first, you're making strides, Russ. You're making strides. You know, people are going to be watching you, want, want to watch. Do you fancy yourself maybe going over to the Worlds or the Euros or something like that if you got the chance? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I did the Euros last year, um, but I wasn't as prepared as it as for it as I would like to be. Uh, so this year, I've really been concentrating on speed work and trying to get that pace going. Uh, so would like to think I could maybe do Andorra again this this year in the Championships, but uh, we'll, we'll see see where I am at the time. Wow! Wow! Think, well, obviously this was a qualifier as well, but. For it, so I can I can enter it. It's just for the time. Yeah, really. yeah. that's a big race. It's going to be a great season this year. Um, Russell, I, I mean, I, don't, I want to say well done on the tough. Thank you, Thank you for joining me. Um, but where's the next one at then? So you, your next one in Scotland will be will be Tartan Warrior. Tartan Warrior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a bit more technical. I think it's going to be a bit more technical. Well, being it's only eight k, so I have to get the get the speed on the go there. <laughs> but, uh, because, I, think, I think Gavin uh, bought some of the rig because obviously um, Mark Huggins' gym's closed down now and yeah. uh, he's bought quite a lot, lot of the stuff down there uh, so it'll be interesting to see what he uses of what I know anyways in the, in the, in the race so. Is it hard for you to, to find places up there in Scotland to actually go and go yeah. and train OCR and, and that? Yeah, well Hoyk was closest to me and that was still an hour away Wow um, and then you've got like Ninja Warrior up in Edinburgh, uh, but it's only a small. I've never been there, but I know it's quite small. Uh, but apart from that, I don't have a clue what else is nearby. So I'm just turning up to races and just winging it, really. <laughs> <laughs> You're you winging it damn life. good, mate. You are <laughs> winging it damn good. I'll say that to you. Uh, so, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. I, I think the Scottish might, the series might get a little bit tougher. Um, I don't think that. All the quick lads were there the first one, so it'll be interesting to see what It's the cold. The cold put people off. It, you know, it's it's only those diehards that go to the, the cold events. And, and I say us, and I mean the royal us, because I didn't go. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it is um, it is only the diehard OCR people that go to the really cold events and that. I wouldn't it's, recommend it's... it. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Total Warrior, are you going to come down to any of the big races, maybe down London, Nuclear, or Nuts? Or yeah, Infamous? well, I think... Spartan's got like a championship race on, so I'm, I've got my eye on that one as well. Um, okay, so I, might, I might come down and make it. Make it again, but... So, if I remember rightly, that is 30th of April. Um, yeah. As I quickly turn around there, the listeners don't know, but I quickly turn around and looked at my calendar. So that's the the super on the Sunday, if I remember rightly. That's yeah. part of the UK OCR series as well. So um, that could be your that could be your first chance to make a, an inroad. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah. Are you going AG or are you going elite? I'll be elite. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be saying to you go AG. I'd, I'd be suggesting elite. You know, you if you can take Gavin and Gavin's up there with the elites, then you you need to be racing against the best. I guess that that probably will probably be your toughest 
challenge, I would have thought, especially um, Dan Tickham turns up, Tom Tweddle, people like that. And we might even get some of the, the Europeans coming across as well. So I guess you'll see see how good you are and, you know, your ability is against them, won't you, and what you need to work on. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I say, I've done the European Championships last year, and that was a bit of an eye opener. Yeah. yeah. I've changed my training a wee bit, yeah, but I know Dan Tick, it comes in. He's an absolute machine. Like, it's, uh, yeah. he's got that base. Um, but he's doing it for a few years, so hopefully I'll catch up with him at some point, mate. Plenty of time to catch up. Russell, uh, thank you for joining me today. It's well, been a pleasure um, chatting to you, and hopefully we're going to get you on some more. Oh, well, what happens is, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening to that podcast. You got three for the price of one there, eh? Um, although you don't pay for the podcast. Um, but people do actually pay to listen to our podcast. Yes, um, we have Patreons. They don't pay to listen to our podcast. They pay to help us. So they pay to be part of our our group, part of um, helping UKOCR grow and supporting UKOCR. And it's going to help us bring more content Um already in the process of, of doing this very shortly. So I'm going to give a bit of a shout out to them all. Um, let's go with them. Will Chung, Michelle Carney, Sophia Harnaday, Matthew Kirk, Martin Gemmel, Paul Ellis, Richard Willis, Gordon Cameron, Charlotte Malone, Daniel Weston, and our latest one, Ben Griffin. If you want to be part of this, if you want to um, be part of our community, our little community, um, you can do that by just clicking the link um, where it says support UKOCR, which is in the description. Um, please do it. We do this for free. We pay for our own money. Um, however, we're at a point now where we're, we're very, very close to actually covering our costs. And it's going to help us get us to, to more events in terms of we can get cameras to events and things like that, um, which is coming shortly. So, yeah. So, thank you, everyone, for listening. You all take care. You all stay self. Yeah, that completely messed that bit up, didn't I? <laughs> You all take care, you all stay safe, I'll see you soon, love ya, bye! Try